Hi, this is Jo Harris and today we're looking at 21st century learning and how to use technology to teach as viewed through the SAMA and situational leadership model. Well, technology is really just a tool. So in terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them, the teacher is the most important and that is by Bill Gates. So he should know what he's talking about when it comes to technology, I figure. What is the SAMA model? Well, it was defined and developed by Dr. Rubin and it is a framework for integrating technology into the classroom for learning gains and greater learner engagement. So creating that real world relevance of bringing technology well and truly into the classroom for our digital native students. So this is a picture of the model. As you can see, there's four levels. And the most important part to be aware of is this line here. And I will refer to this line soon. So below the line is in using technology to enhance the learning experience and the learning task that you can design as a teacher. And above that is transforming what is possible to teach. And above the line is transforming what uh, learning task can be designed by the teacher. So substitution is really the tech Technology acts as a direct tool substitute with no functional change. Augmentation, the technology acts as a direct tool substitute with some functional improvement. Modification, the technology allows for significant task redesign. And finally, the very top level, technology allows for the creation of new tasks previously inconceivable prior to these technology tools. So it's all about teaching above the line and this is from Oxenbard. Um, and above the line is transformation and below the line is enhancement. And it's really the goal for teachers is to get to that transformational and um, I thought the butterfly coming out of the cocoon was a good representation of what is possible uh, with transformational technology and learning experiences for our students to achieve those learning gains. So this is from um, uh, brings this more to life so it, if you think of it as a ladder and each step of these four layers in SAMA are rung on that ladder, then it kind of makes sense to think, okay, well, substitution, okay, then the next step up if I integrate technology more is augmentation, and then again, modification, and then finally to redefinition. And it's about teaching above the line, and I can't help but come from my coaching background and brings to life to me the analogy that we use in coaching of the iceberg. The iceberg above the water is what you actually see and is what's manifested and what people, how people behave, etc. But really the interesting bit that you want to get to as a coach is what's going along, going on below the waterline. And as you can see in this image, it's usually quite huge. And, um, and we as teachers need to look below this waterline, below the line to find out what are the brakes and accelerators that I can uh, emphasize and use to ensure that I can get ICT used in my classroom and to ensure that kids can feel confident and competent to complete the tasks for uh, transformational learning. And so to, to achieve the implementation of SAMR into the classroom, we, we really need to be looking at what are the accelerators I can uh, utilize and what are the brakes that I can readdress. So some examples that I can think of breaks are, you know, us as teachers being stuck in old habits and old lesson plans, uh, fears for cyber safety and teacher ICT confidence and competence. So it's very unlikely for most teachers who obtain their positional power from their knowledge to hand over that to their students and especially if you're not confident in how to use the technology in the first place. So the accelerators are inclusive educational goals. Really we need to, if we're having students from a variety of learning needs in our classroom, then we need to have that flexibility of using ICT to extend and to assist the kids that are lying on the outer edges of our spectrum of learning needs. Um, it's also, uh, we need to archive the resources and tools for ICT so we can easily use them and access them rather than thinking, where was that? Oh, it's too hard, too late, I don't have time. I'm just going to use what I already know. And IC2 availability within schools that we've got the infrastructure and the, and the actual uh, hardware so that we can use these tools in our classrooms. And then I also believe that it's about having those situational leadership skills as teachers to assist our kids to build up there and know what level of leadership we need to give our kids um, depending on their task proficiency and their um, and competency and their confidence 
to actually undertake the task independently. And I love this quote, it's not information overload as teachers, it's filter failure. So if you're feeling information overload as with it comes to ICT, then you really need to change your filter and set yourself some goals to work towards to maintain your ongoing professional development in this area for the classroom learning. So what is the situational leadership model? Well, it was designed by Ken Blanchard and it's another framework for teaching leaders to, it's really used in the business world. I don't know if it's used in the education world since I'm new to education but old to business if that makes sense. But it's really a framework for teaching leaders to diagnose the needs of, in, of an individual or a team and then use the appropriate leadership style to respond to that needs of the person to achieve the goal of whatever that task may be. So let's have a quick look at the situational leadership model. And and you can see that it's a very simple model, four quadrant model, and it's based on the how much direction you need to give the student or the, the individual that you work, you're leading, and it's also based on how much support you need to give them. So let's have a look at the very first step, which is the one, the one level. So they they need high direction from you and not much support, emotional support, because you're just going to tell them what to do. You're going to do A and then you're going to do B and then you're going to do C, which has resonance for me for SAMA's model in, in substitution level where and also on Bloom's taxonomy where we're just teaching the kids to remember and to do rote learning. So there is definitely a place for this if the, the students has low task and um, you don't have much of a relationship. Now the next level is the level two and here they have some competence so they actually know a little bit about what they're doing but they're not really interested in doing it <laughs> to be frank. They've got very low commitment and this is where you need to be highly directive and both highly support. Well let's talk about this but you know what you're still going to do A, B and C. So a little bit more hands off um, but you have to find out what's the handbrake that's holding them back and what you can do to coach them to buy into intrinsically carrying out that task. Now let's look at the next level which is where you as a leader support them. So here they actually have pretty high uh, confidence but you can see that they're low and they're, they're overly confident, confident in their ability to carry out the task. So you need to be hands-on and supportive of that individual. Um, because you want to walk through and teach them how to make decisions to make sure they stay on task um, because they're just overconfident and um, they're the sort of kids that after a while you realize actually can't do it but they may be too embarrassed to ask for assistance. And then the top level which really resonates for me in um, SAMA's level of redefinition and that's the delegating where that student is very highly competent and highly committed to carrying out the task so very intrinsically motivated and so all you do is give them the broad brush strokes, give them the Rubik's Cube, low direction, low supportive behaviour from you and you just say just go to it, get to it and, and they'll just go on about because they'll work out what do they need to learn, where are they going to get it, how are they going to present it and be very, very creative and so the trouble that people have in your classroom if you've got chaos undergoing going on it may be because for example you may be delegating them but they really need to be told so you're mismatching your leadership style to the individual's task and cut task ability and confidence. So to achieve implementation of the situational leadership into the classrooms, what are the handbrakes and accelerators? Well the brakes are once again if educators we're stuck in old habits of old lesson plans and you know what everyone's going to do exactly the same task. Um, lack of knowledge around learner competence and confidence, you don't know exactly how task proficient or how confident each person in your classroom is to be able to carry out the task and maybe you might have an inflexible teaching style. You don't delegate. Delegation makes you feel very uncomfortable. It may be because you have a certain idea of what you should be doing as a teacher and delegation doesn't fall into what you see your role is. So you may need to have a look at your role and do some introspection there. Now the accelerations that you can use to push you into doing this is to, you know, we all have inclusive educational goals and so we're going to have the gifted and talented with the child that needs has learning difficulties and you 
you're going to disenfranchise the GNT student if you're teaching them by rote. Um, they're going to definitely check out and you may have some behavioural problems there. The other accelerator is it, this will definitely help you achieve the learning gains. It will help you cater for diverse learning needs and it will just build those flexible leadership skills of teachers. Because if a child does not learn the way you teach then you must teach him the way that he learns. So what could be a solution uh, for implementing ICT in our diverse classrooms? Well I've kind of overlaid the two models so let's see what that looks like. So if we look at their task ability and the black font is a situational leadership model and the white font is the SAMA model. So this is they're very low in task and very low in confidence so you must direct and tell the student exactly what to do. It's a very stepwise approach and this would be substitution. Go to Google Earth and look up the directions from A to B. The next level up is um, where their task ability is a bit higher. It's, it's quite high but they're low in confidence. So you need to sell them as to why they should be doing it, what they're going to get out of it, how it links to their real world relevance and, and why for lifelong learning it's important and coach them to understand why and what you can do to help build their confidence, what's holding them back. And this is more of an augmentation. You're still holding their hand and saying, okay, I want you to do this and go here and this is what I want you to get. Just to build their confidence in using technology for example. Then the next level up are the overconfident group and here you need to participate and support them uh, to find out the skills that they don't have that's holding them out, back from being able to be delegated to. And here is more of a modification. So they do, it's just about helping them uh, get it right, hold their hand. And then the very top level is high taskability and high confidence and here it's about um, redefining in SAMA's model and just delegating to them, just about designing the rubric of the outcome from the learning. So there's my references and I hope you've enjoyed this. I've certainly enjoyed putting this together and trying to think out of the box. See you later. Bye for now. Joe Harris.